Hey everyone, uh, glad you tuned in today. At least the last 15, maybe 20 years, I have been making a, um, a homemade chili recipe. And so I'm actually down here in Seal Beach. You can pretty much go to any grocery store and get these ingredients. There's nothing gourmet about it, special about it. These are all store-bought ingredients. I'm down here in Seal Beach, California at a local sprouts and I like sprouts because they've got their meat quality is good their vegetable quality is good uh, and it's just a really good place for the ingredients so normally I make this at Christmas time a couple weeks before Christmas right after the first of the uh, first of December I'll uh, make this recipe and it's just kind of a tradition that I've done uh, with my family and everyone seems to enjoy it Right now it's May, it's springtime, and just two days ago it was in the upper 90s in Southern California. Uh, probably not completely out of the ordinary, but uh, for me personally it was miserable. Crazy thing is today, it's cool, it's chilly, and right, <laughs> it's chilly, uh, and right now it's getting cloudy and it might even rain tonight of all things. Just 24 hours after face melting heat, it's now actually pretty cold outside. Okay, so I'm out of my car, and check it out. I mean, these clouds are rolling in. It's windy. Uh, sorry if you guys are getting some wind noise in the camera. Not a lot I can do about it. Look at the flag. It's really blowing out here, and I don't know. It was only 20 or 30 percent chance, but we actually might get some decent amount of rain, maybe. Well, let's just run down the list. Everything is going to be down below, uh, so you can see the whole entire recipe down below uh, with all the ingredients and the directions, but I just wanted to kind of give you a visual of what's included here. So, we're going to have cumin, we're going to have lean ground pork, beef chorizo, you got a three pound, this happened to be a chuck roast uh, that I had them cube up, but you can also get three pounds of stew meat if you prefer to do that instead. We've got two, two medium yellow onions way over here. We're going to use seven cloves of garlic. I've got four fresh jalapenos here. We're going to slice those up, chop them up, get them in there. This is where the heat comes from. Now these are two habanero peppers. Um, it's up to you. If you are a little afraid of that, you don't have to put these in or maybe just one. Uh, I like to have a little heat in mind, but uh, you know, with all the ingredients, you know, this isn't going to give you that much heat. But if you're really uh, heat averse, um, you know, you can leave these out if you'd like. Also, we have two red bell peppers back here in the back, two of those. We've got a, one large Anaheim chili, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to roast it and then we're going to peel it and take uh, the waxy skin off. We've got two tomatoes, two fresh tomatoes here. I'm going to use four of the green onions uh, out of this batch that I just bought. We're going to have some salt. We're going to have some commercial chili powder. This happens to be the stuff that I bought uh, at Sprouts. I bought about, well, there's, I think at least five tablespoons in there. That's what the recipe is going to call for. Uh, you can use Gebhardt's or any kind of commercial chili powder works just fine. Uh, I just happened to buy the bill. Uh, bulk ones because it's uh, you know it tends to be a little bit cheaper. We're going to put in some oregano. We're going to put in one whole 28 count a uh, 28 ounce can of tomatoes. We'll show you that here. You want to make sure you get the uh, the whole tomatoes that are in the juice because you're going to mash these up in your hands. So make sure you get a 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes. We already talked about the cumin. You're going to get uh, pinto beans. And also, we're going to do um, dark red kidney beans. Now, I like to do no salt added because this recipe can get salty as it is, and so I don't really think you need the added salt. So, my personal opinion is you should go and try and get no salt added to kind of help out a little bit. First thing you want to do is the one tablespoon of the whole cumin seeds. You want to go ahead and put this in a pie tin, just a plain old pie tin like this. Get your oven preheated to 375 and we're going to roast this. This is the first thing you want to do 
before you start anything, uh, this can kill some time. So you want to get this in the oven right away because you want to get these roasted and let them cool off for a little bit. Now what I use to make mine is this, uh, I think it's a six quart Dutch oven. This is really the best thing to use because it's heavy duty. It's actually a cast iron with porcelain coating uh, Dutch oven. So it's very heavy, but it's great because it really retains the heat. I like this one too uh, versus the one that I actually used to have. You can see the cast iron in here right here. It was all cast iron and the problem with that is they work great but you have to get them seasoned. At least this one has got a coating already so it's kind of non-stick. Uh, and this is what I use uh, to make my chili. Another great uh, kitchen pan to have is one of these cast iron skillets. This one happens to be Emerald Lagasse's model and uh, this one's really great for um, I mean you can use this thing for almost anything. I'm going to use this to roast my Anaheim chili and that way we can get it all roasted up and then sweat the skin off. Okay so we've got our Anaheim chili in the pan here. Let's just kind of turn it over see how it looks. No, it's still got a ways to go so we'll just go ahead and keep rotating it. You want to get this a little toasty and, and dark. Uh, it's okay if you burn it a little bit. That's kind of what you want. You want to get this nice and toasted brown. The other thing that you can do, I'm just doing this inside the house on one of these cast iron skillets. You can always uh, roast this over a open flame if you have a barbecue. That might even work better. So, just another option. Okay, so we pulled our, our cumin out of the oven and it's now nice and toasty, toasty brown. That's what we want. It smells really good in this kitchen right now. You want to make your kitchen smell like the Southwest roast some cumin. So we're going to just set that off to the side now. So this is looking really good. This is exactly what you want this chili to look like. It's completely roasted all over on all sides. In fact, the skin's already starting to come off. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to place it into this glass bowl. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and we're going to let that skin uh, sweat right off. Let's go ahead and pull this Anaheim chili out and I'll show you what this looks like. So you see it's all wrinkled up. Smells fantastic though. And all we want to do here is see look at see waxy skin just comes right off now. See that? Oh this one actually came out better than uh, better than it did last year, uh, Christmas when I did it. So there you go. You just want to take the skins right off and then we're going to chop this bad boy up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut up the habaneros. Now, just a word about these. First of all, um, you want to make sure that as you're handling these, you do not, I repeat, do not touch your eyes or anywhere near your face. You want to make sure you wash your hands uh, thoroughly before you uh, get your hands anywhere near your face, especially your eyes. Trust me. Uh, so. It's up to you. If you really want the extra heat, you can leave the seeds in. Uh, I've got some family members coming over in a little while to try it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take the seeds, seeds out. It's probably going to be hot enough without it. And if you want to just do one habanero, that's probably fine. I don't think it's going to be too hot with one because of everything else. It's going to make it a little bit uh, milder. It'll take the heat out with all the other ingredients. I'm going to put two in because I like some heat. But this is basically what you're looking for, is you just want to get the seeds out of there like that. That's where really the heat's going to come from. And then we'll just chop these up. Okay, after all the prep work, this is what you want to end up with. You really want to have two separate bowls. Uh, one bowl is going to have the onions, the garlic, the habaneros, and the jalapenos. And so look how beautiful that looks. So I'm going to get a good shot in there. That's bowl one. In the other bowl, you want to have the bell peppers, the tomatoes, the green onions, and the Anaheim chili. It's all red because the tomatoes and the uh, red, uh, red bell peppers can't see the difference, but that's what the other bowl is going to look like. So, now that our prep work is all done, let's get started with uh, cooking this up. Okay, so before we go ahead and put uh, some of this meat in, just a couple pointers. Uh, like I said earlier, I got a whole chuck roast 
and I had them cube it up. It ends up being cheaper, I think, than uh, buying three pounds of stew meat. If you're really lazy, you could buy three pounds of stew meat, and that works just fine. Uh, it's cheaper to go the chuck roast route and have them cube it up. A shout out to Sprouts. When I got there, they did not have uh, any beef chorizo. So I asked him about it. And he says, Oh, yeah, that's no problem. Just wait a couple minutes and I'll make you some. So that's fresh beef chorizo that they just made. And we're also going to be throwing in some fresh lean, extra lean uh, ground pork. So we're going to put that in the pan right now. Okay, here we go. First thing we're going to put in is the beef chorizo. Beef chorizo first. Make sure that your pan is nice and hot before you put your uh, meat in. And now we're going to put in the lean ground pork. And we're going to go ahead and get this sauteed up. So we're just going to stir it around and get it nice and brown. And now you want to add the, uh, the beef to it. Great, so now we're going to get that all cooked up as well and get this uh, meat nice and brown. Okay, so we've been browning the meat here for a couple minutes. You can see the uh, chorizo on the pork is all nice and brown. The meat's starting to get there. Now let me show you the reason why you want to separate the ingredients uh, in the two separate bowls. We're going to put this bowl in first. The onions, the garlic, the green onions, and the habaneros, and the jalapenos. This is going to go in right now into the pot. Now, don't panic. Uh, it looks like this thing is all the way up to the top. Don't worry. All this stuff is going to cook down. There'll be plenty of room at the top for everything. So we're going to put all this in. We're going to brown all of this together over high heat. You want to have this on uh, pretty much all the way cranked up, and you want to get everything nice and brown. So this has been cooking for maybe about 10 minutes and you'll see that uh, everything's starting to cook down, the onions are starting to get clear, and the meat's starting to get brown. So what we want to do now is stick in the next batch of ingredients. Okay, so we've got the second glass bowl in there. It's starting to uh, add some color to it. It's starting to look really nice. So we're going to continue to add ingredients. The next thing up is we're going to add the cumin to it. So we're just going to dump it in that right there. And we're just going to get it all incorporated. So what we want to do now is add, continue adding the ingredients. What we're going to do is add the dry ingredients. So I just basically put them all together in one bowl, the oregano, the chili powder, and the salt. So we're just going to dump that in, just like everything else. We're just going to keep incorporating everything. So once that's in, we'll just kind of mix that up a little bit. Get it stirred up. i got to tell you, it smells awesome in this kitchen right now. So we're just going to incorporated there a little bit. Basically what, we're, what we want to do is you want to add all the ingredients. The only thing that we don't want to add at this point are the beans and I'll talk about the beans in just a second. Um, so the next thing we want to do are the canned tomatoes. Now the trick with these, this can be uh, a little messy or a little fun. You want to take each tomato like that and you just want to mash it up in your hands but you got to be careful these things squirt. You just want to mash it up a little bit just like that. Kind of squish it and just dump it in there. So I'm going to do another one. Yeah, trying to keep my wife's stove nice and clean so sometimes it's easier said than done. But that's all you want to do. Just want to take them out, mash them up, dump them in the pot. Okay, so this is what it looks like after all those tomatoes got mashed up in there. I also added the rest of the juice from the tomato can. So Yep, we're actually at the top of the lid, but that's okay because this is going to cook and some of it's going to evaporate. Um, so we're just going to keep on going. We're going to let this cook down a little bit before we add the beans to it. Okay, so the last thing we're going to stick in are the beans. Now, just something real quick on the beans. Uh, as you know, we're going to put in pintos and dark red low-sodium kidneys. Now, uh, you know, for the longest time, I refused to put in beans because Tex real Texas chili, from what I understand, does not have beans. Uh, you know, if I had my choice, I guess I never would have added them. 
But having said that, you know, beans are healthy. Uh, my family likes it with the beans. And honestly, I think now I've gotten used to having chili with beans. Uh, but just wanted to put that out there. You don't have to add them. It's strictly optional. And probably, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and do that. So we're going to dump these cans of beans in. As soon as we do that, we will simmer it for one hour and then we'll correct the seasoning. Okay, so we got family coming over. Uh, we got family that's arrived, and uh, you know what? We're gonna eat. So we're, I'm gonna open up this lid, and let's just take a look and see what we've got. We um, technically we've got another 25 minutes to go on this, but you know what? It's kind of late, and everyone's really hungry. So I think we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna eat. Looks like everything's starting to cook down. You can see some of the liquid is now starting to uh, have uh, has cooked off. So let's serve some of this up and let's see what it tastes like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a, uh, a big old bite of this and we're going to see how this is. Here we go, moment of truth. It's really hot, heat hot. Look at that. Mmm. Here we go. Mm. The meat's really tender. As we let this simmer more, it's going to even be more tender. It's got a little bit of a bite, but not too bad. Um, it's actually not that spicy. And I think it has to do with the fact that we left the, um, the habanero seeds out of it. So actually, if you, if you do both habaneros, take the seeds out, you can pretty much handle it. I'm feeling a little bit of the burn right now, but it's not bad. So give it a shot. You know, play around with it. That's the nice thing about chili. You can do whatever you want. The world's open to you. You can change it up, different weird ingredients if you want. Give it a shot. Uh, go ahead and make it, and let me know in the comments what you think. I'd love to hear your experiences. Talk to you later. Bye.